Welcome, brothers and sisters, my name is Eros and I am the doll maker. Also, welcome to the third and final main episode of this series on sigil magic. In this episode, I will show you a few tricks and additional uses for sigil magic. Sigil magic that we've learned previously on this series, so of course you will need to have practiced a little the art of sigil makings. Now my first tip for you will be to use sigils to manifest something really strange, but that you don't really care about in the beginning especially when you are starting for example with a declaration of intent like i receive an unexpected little gift or i find something with a really strange form this technique is useful because since you don't really care about it you don't really care about the specific manifestation you will quickly forget about your sigil and about the manifestation and magic has the best chances to manifest when you are when you completely forget about it Continuously looking for the results of your magic. In fact, it's just like telling the universe you don't really trust him to deliver whatever you wished for. Instead, putting in your sigils something you can easily forget will allow you to quickly manifest it and feel that click you will feel when one of your wishes become reality actually i have no exact words to describe what we feel when magic manifests in front of us apparently by coincidence but if you keep on practicing you will begin to recognize it you will begin to recognize that click on the same note of the previous technique we can create a decoy sigil which is basically a sigil containing a declaration of intent which is already true. Why, you may ask? Because our subconscious is receiving all of our sigil in the same way and applying this technique to the Koi sigil, we may trick our subconscious mind into believing since this one is true, it means all of the sigil transmitted in the same way, absorbed from our subconscious in the same way, should be true. Speeding up and empowering our manifestation. Now, on a completely different note, a very peculiar way to activate sigil is to charge them when they are ready and leave them in plain sight. For example, on a small wall board or simply taped to the wall to involuntarily activate them, of course. This is not a method I necessarily recommend, 
since it's more reliance on luck than skill. But if you have a very high production of sigils and are ready to cycle your board periodically or your wall periodically, you may want to consider also this method. Using the same approach, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you may want to create permanent sigils. Of course, this requires quite a lot of experience in using sigils, and you need to have developed confidence in your magical craft. But when you feel ready, you may want to start this variation of the technique. The main difference in this variation is that sigils will not be destroyed, quite the opposite. They usually will be recorded in our diary, as we've seen before, in case we need or want them to operate again. For example, if we design a protection sigil that worked really well for us, we may want to repeat that sigil. In this variation, we are going to prepare the sigil as usual, as we've learned before, but instead of putting it away or charging it, pre-charging it, we are going to write, paint or carve it, the sigil, where we want it to take effect. For example, a sigil of protection in my diary, a sigil of inspiration in my drawing sketchbook, or a sigil of power carved in my wand. This sigil to take effect requires to be periodically recharged and needs to be charged with all of yourself, with all of your might, when you charge it the first time. This method is not really suited to manifest reality. It's more directed to empower an object. We may say a first form of enchantment or charm. And we'll, this method will usually be a very simple derived from a very simple declaration of intent like power or healing power for your wand, for example. But even protection or spiritual protection for any object, actually. And is an effort, this method is an effort that we need to keep up in time if we want it to work. It may even be considered a separate technique. Just be sure to have experience in sigil crafting before trying any variation of the sigil magic technique. I really hope these tips will be useful to you. I really hope you will be determined in your practice and hopefully that I will have the privilege to have you on the next series in which we will explore the mysteries of spell work. If you made until this point, I deeply honor you for your patience 
I kindly thank you for your attention and may eternal life shine.